Hi everyone, welcome back to the Neurospicy Knitter YouTube channel. My name is Jess and I am a knitter and crocheter out of Connecticut. Today is the first podcast episode, I think in over a year. I can't wait to show you guys what I'm working on. So grab your project of choice, your drink of choice, and let's get started. So let's start with my whips of the year. This year I'm trying a new way to organize my projects. Uh, three different categories, so I have focus project, which is a big project that I'm working on, a to-go project, which is several different ones, more like fidget projects that are like socks, hats, anything small and portable, and then on hold projects because I did bring a ton of projects over into the new year and I probably won't discuss those much on the podcast but I will let you know as I start working on them with if it was an on hold project that I already had started last year and that kind of thing so let's start with my focus project I am working on the twists and turns by Stephen West this um is my buddy knit that I'm doing with my best friend Allie. We are, we've picked out a bunch of different shawls to do. So this is in a bag that she actually made for me for my birthday last year. And it's fantastic. And it was like her first project bag ever. So I'm so honored that she gave it to me. So I have these. I originally bought these when the MCAL was going on and I just had such a hard time with it. I just pulled it out. These are by King Fiber, Q-I-N-G Fiber in the colors Latte, Red Maple, and then Quaking Aspen. I do have a little bit of progress, so I'll pull that out to show you guys. Didn't get very far. And it's tangled so this is what I got going so far I do plan on if I can get it to focus I do plan on working on this a little bit today um yeah we're starting with crew one and we both have a ton of projects going on right now uh, I will also because she was so nice and gave me permission to add in her project. So it would be over here. Hers, I don't know the yarn brand or anything like that. So if I end up getting what she's making hers with the colors in, I'll just put it underneath the picture. Yeah, that it's coming out good. And I understand so much more this time around. I'm just floored that I didn't get it the first time because just something wasn't clicking in my brain. So that is my focus project. So that one stays at home most of the time unless I'm going somewhere for a couple days and I'm gonna be stationary. Kind of just leave it at home to focus on my socks because got a lot of those whips too. So the one I am currently working on is what I'm calling my Grinch socks, which the colorway was inspired by the Grinch. Um, it is, I think it's, yeah, it's Cuddly as a Cactus by the Cozy Cauldron, Cozy Cauldron Fiber Co. Love her. She's become a great friend over the last, like, maybe like six months since we started talking. So I'm doing the socks. They would untangle because nothing wants me to pick it up right now. Okay. Now that I've got that. So I'm doing them a little, they're, each sock is a little different. So this is, this is the uh, mostly red one. So it starts with a pop of color, 20 row cuff, and then I did a 70 row leg, and then a short row heel, and then I haven't gone further on this one yet, but I think um, I'm going to add more stripes into the foot. Uh, I haven't at a certain point, I haven't decided yet, I haven't decided if I'm doing thicker stripes, thin stripes. I just think that more stripes are needed. And then this one is the green version. So it's 
green, same thing, 20, 20 row cuff, knit two, knit, per, knit two, purl two, 70 row leg, and then a another short row heel. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. And this is all in a barley and pearls bag. Barley pearls, I think. Um, barley pearls, I don't know. I always mess up how to say their name. And I absolutely like live by their project bags. So I'm not sure why I can't figure out how to pronounce that. But yes, um, those are what I am currently working on. I also am working on my first ever pattern which I can't wait to show you guys, which is also in my to-go project slot. But I'm waiting until I have like it more finalized and just just keep an eye out for on Instagram for a test or call. Um, I'm very excited about this and I cannot wait to show you guys. So I have no finished objects right now. The last finished object I actually finished was my Christmas advent socks that I made for Joe and I and I haven't finished anything since. I'm hoping by the next podcast the Grinch socks are done though because I'm very excited about those because I just came up with the idea out of my brain did not following any specific pattern or anything like that but so no finished objects today so we can just get kind of into some life stuff. Um, so I decided this year I wanted to add gaming also into it because I am not an avid gamer but I do like to play games and I've been doing it a lot lately so I figured may as well show share it with you guys so with reading I'm not reading anything currently at the moment I am going to start a reread of House of Sky and Breath because the next one comes out I think in my notes it's yeah, House of Shadow and Flame and House of Sky and Breath. That ending, if you know, you know. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody because that was crazy. But um, both of them are by Sarah J. Mass. Mass. I've heard people say Mass. Mass. I say Mass. If I'm saying it wrong, let me know. But I say Mass. Yeah, I favorite author of mine. I'm very excited for this next book. I cannot wait to see where this goes. So if you like fantasy, you like a little spice to your fantasy, highly recommend any of her books, but you might want to start with Akatar. I think Akatar is probably one of her like easier reads because it's in it's in first person instead of third person. A lot of her other books are in third person, which is totally fine. I can read both, but I definitely prefer per first person and I it definitely goes quicker. So if you're new to fantasy, definitely recommend Akatar. So watching, I started a, watching a lot of random episodes of Law & Order SVU. That is a to-go series for me, a go-to series for me. I, I've been wa watching it since I think college. I had a college roommate who her and one of our friends who lived in the same dorm room as us would come over to our dorm, our room every Wednesday and we'd, it was Law and Order Wednesdays. I'd come back from class, we'd sit, do our homework and have been into it I think ever since. Don't watch it on Wednesdays anymore because I don't have cable unfortunately. But I have Hulu and Hulu has all 24 seasons if you're looking to binge watch it. I don't typically watch it in order anymore. I just kind of skip and hop around. I do watch the newer seasons in order though. So season 25, I think, started actually this past week. So I actually, actually have to go check to see if there's an episode up. So I'll probably end up watching it after this if it's on Hulu. Or Peacock. I think they're also on Peacock too. But I think Peacock only has the newer stuff. So Hulu has everything. So if you're looking, Hulu. I'm also watching, or just finished watching, the the Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. If you don't know, she just got released at the end of December. I found listening to her story very interesting. I very much am very much into true crime. 
I learned a little bit more about um, Munchausen's by proxy. I think that's how what it had, like her mother had. But if you're interested at all in true crime, I highly recommend it. It was really good. It's on, I watched it on Hulu. I think it's also on, because it's by Lifetime, I think they were doing an encore presentation of it. But 10 out of 10 recommend if you're looking for a new trial, true crime thing to watch. Now on to playing. I'm actually been very into a probably be considered a horror game called Dead by Daylight. It's um how did I explain it in my notes? It's probably my hyperfixation game right now because every time I get a chance to play I want to play it. I've been playing it a lot with Joe. We've played it with our friend Matt a couple times. I've been trying to get my brothers to play it with me. They have not done so yet. So I'm sorry, I'm just reading my notes. Uh, the concept of the game is there are four survivors and one killer. So there's five players in this game and it's an online, it's an online game. The four survivors are trying to fix generators and avoid the killer and escape the map, essentially. The killer is trying to kill all the survivors. So you have to work with your team to get out. I usually play as a survivor. Killer is not my thing. Killer is in a first person view, which is for me very hard to do in a video game. Third, um, The survivors are in third person, which is a little bit easier to move around and see what's going on, see where the killer is, see where the generators are. I personally love that. It's a game that I've been enjoying playing lately. And I'll probably continue to enjoy playing it. Like Joe and I played like 10 rounds of it last night at his house. We'll probably play it again tomorrow, maybe in between football games because it doesn't take much to like turn it on, find a match and like play for like 15, 20 minutes and then watch the next football game. So that is what I've been playing. If you're into horror and like video games, highly recommend it. The graphics are a little bad, but I, I don't mind it. The load times a little can be a little long depending on what system you have it on. I know it's on Xbox, PlayStation, PlayStation, Switch, and I think it's also on the computer. I have it for the Switch and my PlayStation. Leave my Switch at Joe's house so I can play it with there. He has it on his Xbox and it's cross compatible so you can play it with multiple people over like different systems. So when, when me and Joe play, I play it on my Switch. He plays it on his Xbox. My brothers both have it on their Xboxes. I can play it on my PlayStation and still play with them. So it's just a, I think it's just an overall round good game. It is a little nerve wracking, does provoke your anxiety a little bit. So if you don't like that kind of feeling, I would not recommend playing it. But if you do like horror, killers, anything like that, I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. I probably could keep going on for this. Um, some of the notable killers that they have in there are Michael Myers, Chucky, Ghostface, Freddy Krueger. Um, I'm trying to see if I remember if they have anybody else. They do have original killers, which are really cool, such as like the Huntress. She wears like a bunny mask, hums this creepy lullaby and throws hatchets at you. So... If that doesn't scream horror lover, I don't know what does. But yeah, I, 10 out of 10, recommend that game if you're looking for a new game to play. All right, guys, that is all I have for you guys today. I'm thinking podcasts maybe every other week or like twice a month kind of thing. I don't knit very quickly, so I'm thinking I'll have enough progress between that to be able to show you guys something. I'm hoping next time the socks are done because those have been going pretty quickly since I just started doing focus projects and to-go projects. So I'm hoping I get a little bit more progress done on some of the other stuff that I'm typically a little bit slower on. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Happy knitting! <laughs>